you. Just thank you, everyone. Yes, to clarify. So there was a presentation in Canberra around GovCMS and Civic Theme, but today's presentation will be slightly different. It's actually a variation of one I did at uh, the Drupal South in Wellington. Um, so this is a, a more advanced version of that one. So just to clarify that. So uh, welcome to the session. Um, we'll be talking about you know, Figma, uh, designing in Figma and deploying a pixel perfect Drupal website in days, not weeks. So uh, firstly, I need to confess that uh, I'm providing you a warning up front now <laughs> that I'll be making two controversial statements. Um, it, it may uh, upset some of you and not aiming to offend anyone, but let's see what happens. Um, and that's, an, that's one of the disclaimers out of the way for right now. So let's just begin. So just a quick intro uh, or covering what we agenda, what we're covering today. Uh, we've got just a quick intro, um, how web development typically happens, how a true design system can help Drupal builds, introducing Civic Theme, an open source true design system, and showing the magic of kind of how this works and what it is and what it isn't, and then some questions. So an intro to me quickly. Uh, my name is Akil. <laughs> I live in Australia, so we're here. Uh, 22 years in the tech industry, started kind of in um, product sales and uh, with the web web software co company. Um, then I ended up having my own agency looking after graphic design, web design, front end development and website development. So I did all the coding in the olden days when it was just HTML, basic kind of UI markup stuff. And then I did a lot of user experience and designs. Uh, worked in the last decade or so, worked with the Department of Communications and the Arts, specifically in the web services team, and then moved into the communications team where I was, um, and both of those was looking after the external websites for the corporate sites and the internal intranet as well. Um, and then I think I had another arts when we got mocked with arts, so joined with another department. And I also looked after the arts website as well for about uh, the seven of the eight years I was there. And then lastly, the last few for a few years, four years especially, I've worked with Salsa Digital, uh, where I am now, and as a di digital dis engagement manager, uh, marketing business development lead, and kind of UX and product development with our teams internally here. So I'm going to skip the usual. This is a bit more of an interactive session. It's a bit harder when it's a bit online, but I'm expecting people to wave and do whatever they can to interact with me if they like to. <laughs> so I'm going to skip the usual, who's a designer, who's a developer question. You all know who you are. <laughs> but I'm going to ask uh, ask you all a couple of questions here. So, uh, and hopefully if you can, put your hand up, it's fine. Um, so who here starts with an actual visual design when they're actually building a website? And there's a lot of developers around for anyone. I'm actually quickly looking at the screen there. Anyone want to confess? Yes, okay. One or two, cool. Um, and then who actually wings it? So, uh, you know, you might use some lo-fi wireframes or something else and kind of have an idea of what you're going to do and just goes into building. I hope, I'm guessing that's a lot of the developers here. Let's just say a few of you. Okay, cool. So typically what happens on a web design and build process is that you'll have you know stages where you'll have the design and discovery and it's, and the build um, and then a couple of stages towards the end to kind of finalize and test everything off before it's launched it's more like a, a relay race there's a bit of a baton passed between the phases you know it's a very sequential um process even though this is agile development there is kind of distinct phases within this and normally the first phase is in the design phase where it's followed by build unless you have those developers um, who just wing it, and they'll just jump straight into the build phase there. And then often the design team is um, either an internal team or most often an external agency that's engaged to do the designs responsible for that first component, where it may also include you know, uh, user testing and any kind of user um, validation and, and work there for HCD designs. So just running through kind of the diagram there, we've got the requirements discovery, low five, wireframe development, et cetera, in that first phase. Sorry, um, sorry. Uh, can I, are you trying to share your screen or not? Oh, yes, yeah, <laughs> I was. Ah, I have not, maybe, maybe it's not coming through. Try again. You have not shared your screen yet. Any of it. Oh, wow. I did try, something didn't work. It looks like it bounced off. Uh, the reason I came in late because I had a uh, update with um, NVIDIA. So I think something just knocked up. Let me give it a sec. Do you want me to start again? Is it sharing now? Yes. Okay, cool. Great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All good now. Okay. That was fun. 
Okay, so I'm going to skip through. Now you can imagine what I was showing you. You can actually see what it looks like. There's me. <laughs> so uh, this is what I was explaining. Yes, so thank you. <laughs> so uh, just running through the diagram there, um, and these are kind of the high level things that you'd include. It's kind of the requirements discovery, some life lo-fi wireframe development potentially then you would validate those with some user research activities and then you'd, there'd be some design iterations within there and you could have one or two sprints or many sprints depending on how long you want to do the designs and how detailed you want to do those and then you finally have your final designs which are they need to be signed off so that kind of marker there then depending on the project there's some kind of handover often this is done with um, you know the design team potentially to the next phase uh, either the files are just handed over or sometimes there's some kind of exchange there to explain what's going on um, does that, does that make sense with everyone? That's everyone pretty much agrees. That's generally how it works. Yes, people are nodding. At least I can see what they're nodding to. Thank you. So any idea how long I was going to ask, actually, any idea how long the first phase typically would take? Does that sound about right? You know, three to eight weeks, depending on the range of uh, activities you put in there. Does anyone want to nod or? Yes, cool. Yes, we'll just go with yes. And then the second phase can take uh, anywhere between four to 16 weeks or more, depending on the size, the complexity of the website. So, you know, overall, it's roughly, you know, 24 weeks uh, to do a project. Could be less, could be anything from like, you know, the four to seven, uh, sorry, four weeks plus seven, three, two to three. Um, and then that would be the range of your um, project there. So that's kind of the general approach and it could be less. For the screen to change. So there's common issues with this approach. So as I mentioned before, there's a kind of warm or cold handover of the design files. So the pressure is on now, execs are asking questions, the project started, uh, and the project designer is about to, you know, the design team are about to start another project, while the build team is waiting for the designs to be handed over to start their project. So what happens, generally the, the handover is either cold or warm. You either just get the files uh, as is, um, or you have some kind of um, transition meeting to say, hey, here are the files, here are the things to look out for, et cetera, some kind of knowledge transfer. But often that's the one-time deal, you know, that's normally done at the end of that design phase, that first phase that we showed, and that's kind of it. And if you're lucky, you might have access to the design team internally to ask questions. So those questions that may come up further down the track, really just working off the designs you have, um, you know, and if things come up like, you know, how does that promo card work? Or, um, you know, how does that, one of my favorites is, how is this going to work on a touch device? Well, it's really up to the developers and the dev build team to kind of figure that out or kind of fill in the gaps um, on their own accord. The um, other things that the, is that lost in translation. So the coding can take time. Obviously, you're building everything from scratch, and naturally, there's a process to go through of, um, tidying up and fixing and going through testing. And then the multiple rounds of testing can take time itself as well. So usually that development cycle can be um, time consuming, um, but also kind of has its own overhead and uh, issues that it comes up with. The last one there is a degradation of the design vision and, and the user experience. So in that first phase, whether it's two, three, seven, eight, 12 weeks, there's a high investment cost they're generally done with a design team, especially if there's user research and kind of more uh, thorough approach to kind of going out to the market or going out to users and, and seeing what they're uh, what they're saying and all that feedback and intelligence and insights needs to come back into the designs, which it does. Now that's often um, only used in that one phase, so it's all done in that design phase, um, and that cost is quite high or can be quite high. So there's a lot of investment upfront, and those key findings are poured into the final designs. Now this is used for that initial build only. Often during the build, there's technical variations creep in. There may be variations to the designs, um, and, that's, uh, and that's towards the end of the project or during the project itself. But down the track, a new feature needs to be developed, um, and that's based only on the live site. It's rare that you know anyone will look back at the original designs um, at all. And so all that investment uh, is kind of just almost a once-off type of um, you know, sunk cost. So I guess I was just going to quickly validate, is that the case, has anyone used original design files from a project, say, a year or two later? Anyone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, one or two. Yep. OK, good. So I wouldn't say it's very uh, common, but there is, um, yeah, there's a chance that you could look at that. But again, it's, it's kind of a one-off sunk cost, and that's a process because of the 
the way that it's set up, uh, the way that it's done. So, so now how can a true design system help Drupal builds? So I'm going to ask a question, but I think most people would know this one who's worked with the design system here and anyone use them regularly in their projects. Bit of a loaded question in this group here, so I'm going to skip that question. <laughs> so what do I mean by a true design system? So maybe I'll just quickly define what a design system is. So we've got uh, a definition from the Nielsen Norman group, which you might have seen, what well, leads in research user experience. And their definition is a design system a set of standards to manage design at scale by reducing redundancy while creating a shared language and visual consistency across different pages and channels. Uh, so it may resonate with some people that that's what it actually is versus what they may understand. And I'll just go through some of the components there because I think there's uh, some kind of common misconception about what a design system is and what it actually consists of and what it's supposed to be for. But the design, a design system consists of visual guides of how to actually um, build or visually place things in uh, on the page or any kind of uh, digital asset. The usage guidelines of how those assets are actually used and interact with uh, other assets. Um, the components that make up a user interface kit or a pattern library, which is probably the most common bit that people actually understand or assume is part of it. what is a design system. It's usually what they think of is either a UI kit or a pattern library. Um, and the, a design system is often quite static. It's it's created potentially at a point in time and sometimes used as a kind of one-off reference. This is different to a true design system where with a true design system, in addition to the above, you have this ability that it's a dynamic uh, document. It matures, it's a, it's a living thing that gets updated as uh, new features are added. So that's that uh, example I gave about, hey, who's looked at something a year ago? Well, if there are new features, they actually get fed back into the system itself and they're a part of the system. Um, so that's more of a, a true design system. It's a living document that matures with the product uh, or the sites or assets that is used within that design system. There are coding standards, uh, specifically that you can include um, code snippets or other more sophisticated cases, which would actually include a library of codified components. So those are actual functional components that are actually part of the design system rather than this, the visual designs um, within a tool. Um, these are actually the functional components that are coded and the standards to use those. Uh, and lastly is the documentation. Uh, quite often there is a comprehensive documentation about the decisions made uh, and the component use, usage and how to modify them if you're going to continue or extend the design system um, to make those extra new components that makes it grow. So uh, a true design system is, is definitely uh, what you want to use over a design system. So the other thing I'm, we're obviously going to talk about today is Figma. So I'm just going to quickly cover what Figma is. So Figma is a collaborative tool. It's used um, for UX design, UX prototyping, um, and other kind of design uh, activities, uh, which is basically run online. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, it was run through the cloud or run, uh, via the cloud. It can create um, you know, fully, fully working apps and responsive websites within the um, Figma uh, program itself. There's no coding required. It's all kind of interface and UI driven, uh, drag and drop, and kind of similar to any kind of design uh, interface that you might use on other products like uh, like the Adobe range or other similar sketch or anything else. Uh, it's highly accessible. So you can learn to use this in days uh, rather than doing long courses or short courses to figure out how it all works. It's fairly intuitive. Now I'm going to go through an in-depth in and expanded history of Drupal. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We all know what Drupal is, so uh, I'm going to go through now. So we've talked about what a design system is, what a true design system is, and Figma, kind of just building up here. Um, now I'm just going to quickly talk about the benefits of using a true design system. So naturally, if you've got something that is um, like Figma, uh, which is an online cloud-based tool, which is collaborative, you can. the key of having a design system with both the design and the functional, the functional and, and um, the components that are built out codified, um, are obviously what the developers would be looking at and can use, um, and the design, uh, visual design components are what the designers would use. But what is super useful now is that you've got this ability in one design system looking at both of these components from both ends, so the developers can actually see what the designs look like, 
and the designers can actually see what the functional components look like. So now they can actually see, okay, if I make a change here and I want to do something, it might impact the interactivity of or the um, interaction spec of the particular components. So this kind of ability to bridge the gap between designers and developers is kind of the biggest thing around having a true design system. The other one is that everyone has a common understanding of what the language is, reducing the time going back and forth when you have definitions of what each element component uh, is, the consistency uh, that this produces. So a design system allows you to have you know, a range of components over websites or other platforms or a group of websites uh, with a unified brand voice and feel across all the platforms. All the buttons look the same. Uh, all the interfaces are the same. All the the um, the scroll bars are on the right spot. I've seen a recently looked at a wireframe and it had multiple pages and there was the same component with uh, a scroller button at the top and the scroller button at the bottom on a different page. And it was all a little bit different for some reason, even though it's the same component. It was not that consistency that, that should have been there from a UX point of view. Uh, it also eliminates design discrepancies um, and, and that enhances user trust when using these systems. You kind of know that, okay, there's been some thought behind that. And then it also creates efficiencies. So this is what we're talking about kind of today is the acceleration to move from design to development very quickly. And it also avoids redundant work. So uh, rebuilding or redesigning or, or even multiple teams trying to work out uh, what these different components could look like. The example I had earlier about the um, handing over the design files and kind of uh, working out what something is uh, supposed to do or look like when say the design team have already worked all that out, but it just didn't, wasn't very clear. So having a design system where the developers and all the team can look at uh, the one source of truth makes that much more uh, efficient. So now introducing Civic Theme, which is an open source, true design system. So you may remember, I mentioned there will be two controversial statements earlier. Well, here they are. <laughs> what if I said, to the developers, you don't need to rely on designers anymore at all. Is that controversial? Are there can, any uh... designers in the room? <laughs> I'm just trying to see if there's anyone answering. <laughs> yeah. Well, let, let's make it fair. Uh, what if I said designers, you don't need developers anymore? <laughs> Is that even more controversial? I mean, there's probably lots of developers here. Lots of. You'll be linked. <laughs> well, how about we come? <laughs> How about we compromise and, and what if designers and developers could both build high quality visual engaging websites on their own? So individually, right? Both of you, you know, developers can build and design the part as well, as well as designers can actually build websites. Yeah, or, or even just working more uh, efficiently together. So typical theme is an open source inclusive component based design system is created so governments and organizations can rapidly assemble modern, consistent, and compliant digital experiences for its audiences. So out of the box, it's an atomic-based design system. So just to define atomic-based design, it was developed by Brad Frost, Frost, where the designs were made up of individual uh, elements and they build up to create larger elements and larger components. So basically there are base elements, atoms, and then there are molecules, which are a formation of atoms. Then there are organisms and then templates and the whole pages. And I'll cover some of these uh, a little bit later, potentially so. So that's atomic design. And those kind of building blocks uh, is one of the key parts here to how this is set up. With Civic Theme, there are also 60 included components in Figma and also codified in Storybook, which is what the tool that we use for the codified components in the design system for the designers to see and use. Um, and there's also a Drupal 10 theme. So all the components are uh, created into the Drupal theme components as well, functional components. There's also low to no code assembly of site that allows web admins and even content authors to build and manage their own pages, layouts, and designs. It is also WCAG 2.1 AA compliant and includes an accessibility compliance report for every development release to ensure that this is maintained uh, through the product lifecycle. It's highly extensible. The design system and Drupal theme is architected to be highly extendable. 
to allow more sophisticated design patterns, integrations and modifications, and visual themes to be added and, and integrated into the base design system itself. And it's visually stunning. Uh, it won the Drupal Splash Awards this year for the best Drupal UX design and project um, early this year at the Drupal Plus Up Awards. It is recommended by government. So in Australia here, we've got the Australian Government Architecture website, which is uh, managed by the Digital Transformation Agency, DTA. And Civic Theme uh, is recommended by the DTA and this website, the AGA website, for new government websites to use uh, on their projects. So Civic Theme is the recommend recommended theme to use. And lastly, it's technology agnostic. So currently we've built a Drupal 10 theme. However, the design system, which is the Figma designs and the functional components um, are technology agnostic. They don't have to be connected to Drupal 10. They can be used with Vue.js or other technologies, which still use the design system framework. At the moment, we just happen to build the Drupal 10 uh, theme itself. So how can we do this in days, not weeks? So how can we build a site in days and design a site in days rather than weeks? So we did talk about the number of weeks that it took to design and the number of weeks that it took to build. Well, these three parts of the site um, are the visual design library, which gives us the design UI library of components. It's built in Figma. It uses the atomic design architecture it's cloud collaborative, and the 60 design components are available in this design library. The codified UI components are the functional UI library of components, so the actual uh, design components, but actually working with HTML and JavaScript and other technologies there, uses Storybook to actually show these in isolation. So each of these uh, components can actually be uh, interacted with without having to run a website. So these can actually work and you can see each of the components actually functioning and the variations and changes that you can do to each of those components. And again, there are the 60 comp functional components. It also is made up of a visual theme. So as I mentioned before, there's a Drupal 10 UI library of components. There's a roadmap that includes other technologies potentially and decoupling the system as well. and it also allows for the low code, no code management of page layouts and designs. And again, there's the 60 Drupal components that are made. So with these three things in particular, we can now do things in days, not weeks. Now the key here is that both the designers and developers can actually use all parts of this. And the bottom there, you can see the 60 design components, functional components and Drupal components. Those 60 components are in 100% sync all time. They're almost in sync all the time, most of the time, <laughs> about 99% of the time. That depends on the life cycle of the design library, changes and contributions and changes as they flow through, but they're pretty much in sync. So if you pick up the designs, you can actually build everything uh, that is available in the designs and in the Drupal side, you can actually build everything that is available in Figma. So how can a true design system benefit projects? Well, it can rapidly help with functional prototyping. You can get rich, rich feedback from interactions uh, of the functional designs rather than just lo-fi wireframes, which people click through. Uh, so in a process where you can actually interact with elements, instead of just getting a feedback on the page, you may actually get additional insights into the buttons and functions within the design team and the actual components themselves, which would have potentially been a, a process that included a second or third iteration of more um, wireframes as they matured in, in a low fi to, to high fi Getting user detail, uh, detailed user feedback uh, earlier in the process. So instead of, as I mentioned, maturing the wireframes from multiple stages, the um, higher fidelity uh, interactive prototypes will allow this feedback to be done at an earlier process within that design. Um, also reducing the number of rounds of design um, uh, iterations that you need in the project itself in that sprint um, plan that we showed earlier. So this also allows the projects to focus more on improving UX like user journeys, um, you know, users finding more key, uh, finding key information or completing key tasks rather than designing and building buttons or menus for every single project. So the focus becomes more on how the designs can improve user uh, experience not about how you build a button for every website that you start with. 
There is minimal development out of the box. There's no low to no code side assembly. So all the components of 60 are pre-built and use the uh, admin Drupal admin to basically configure within the content type um, the different variations of what you can see on the front end. It's highly extensible, so appeals to more sophisticated website projects as well as the very simple ones. And it's very fast to deploy. You can quickly deploy small campaign websites, which then use the same consistent high quality digital experience that the main website or the brand design system that uh, exists. Okay, so we've talked about the process from Figma to, to, to build, and you want to know how it actually works and what the magic is. So we talked about the two different stages of the multiple process here that we do. So if you have a true design system and a cohesive design system like Civic Theme with a comprehensive UI kit and codified lo component library, you can move from Figma to Drupal very, very fast. Designers can be rapidly, designs can be rapidly built and prototyped uh, to, to, to deliver that high fidelity design very quickly, while developers can assemble and build sites quickly as well. The real magic is really how we architected Figma and the design system. And the key ingredient is the atomic based design system and the companion codified component library. So those are the visual designs and the codified functional parts. And that's what makes the civic theme design system possible. We've also built the Drupal 10 theme. However, today it doesn't connect to Figma uh, from Figma to Drupal. So I'm just gonna quickly press these. So you can now you know, do things in days and weeks, mm -hmm. not in the traditional months that it normally takes. Now, although we don't have a connection from Figma to Drupal right now, um, it is a process of either using the Figma design visual design library, and then using the Drupal build, there's no way to change every, anything in Figma and have that kind of spit out code. Uh, that doesn't uh, work that way at the moment, but maybe one day it could. We are potentially looking at ways that that could potentially happen. So an example in real life. So the Climate Change Authority. This was a project uh, that we completed with Civic Theme in four weeks from design to assembly. It included migration as well of 250 pages and almost a thousand media files all done in four weeks. Uh, there was a, an extended time afterwards that we did kind of did a little bit more UAT and other work with it, but it took really just around the four weeks uh, to build out this site, which was very, very fast. So how would you start your open source Drupal project? So you could use what's in the box. So you can adopt the Civic Theme uh, design system as it is. So you can use either the Figma out of the box design and visual library with minor styling and branding applied to your site, or you can extend the Figma designs to create kind of new modified components. You can make the box bigger. You can adapt Civic Theme. You can use the atomic design elements to reassemble, uh, modify, or completely create new components using what's already there. Um, that's changing the atoms and molecules and rearranging those. You can also then just uh, change the visual spacing and other things to create new uh, components um, while maintaining the codified uh, elements and wiring that Drupal might have in the theme itself to make that easier. Or you could kind of just throw out the box and start your own Drupal build. Instead of having to start with Figma, you can just start building with the site directly. Again, it's low to no code after it's set up. Civic theme resources. We have quite a few resources. It's an open source project. So the uh, URLs up there, but there are plenty of uh, elements here that you can kind of work with, whether it's on the Figma side or on the Drupal side, uh, you can work with any of these things here. Skip over that. So, so with a true design system, you can really build a uh, design and build a Drupal site at scale at a very, very short period of time. That's it for now. Is there any questions? Good. Thank you. Um, I do have a question, Nicole. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sure. Just, just trying to <laughs> think trying to comp trying to compose it in my mind, right? And oh. yeah, yeah, hopefully. 
hopefully I can do this just in time. But, you know, yeah. part of the premise, you know, no designer, you know, uh, developer can assemble the um, components and they've got a sort of enough of a kickstart to, you know, produce a really great website. And I'm sure that's, that, that is the case in, in certain contexts, particularly the simple contexts. What, what yeah. about complicated journeys and, and cause, cause you know, UX is a discipline itself and, and people are sort of formally trained as, as UX people and, you know, engineers are sort of, you know, technical by nature. And I imagine there's this, there's a bit of a blurriness there as to what's practical, what's not. Um, can you talk a little bit to that and, and your experience there? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I may have kind of skipped over this bottom one a little bit quickly, but at the bottom there, you can see the design there. Um, the one to three days is really just building out that base design or the base build from a design point of view in Figma. Naturally, whatever UX you'd want to do on top of that happens on top of that. Uh, the other part is that uh, with with any of these projects, with any project really, once you have additional feedback and iteration and changes, then yes, that would change the design system. And um, I guess from a non-developer, from a designer point of view, that need to be potentially familiar with Figma itself and basic kind of design principles <laughs> to modify those designs. Um, but the, the way that it works, that it's fairly uh, modular in those components and those can be updated. Uh, then that would have to be updated on the development side. So yes, would need code, depending on what those changes are, they may need some code based updates on the um, on the Drupal theme side for sure. So uh, it, 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 again, it's difficult to kind of say without, without knowing what those are, but yes, UX, uh, with whether you use the UX to redesign components or whether you use the re UX to actually improve the user experience, which would be user journeys. And really those are based off um, having landing pages or home pages or any pages within the site where you can change the, the layout of the page itself, the design, um, and those components which can get shifted around or moved within any any page since the pages are fluid in this case in civic theme the user experience phase is really more around hey what components are best suited to achieve a particular goal for the user are they trying to find something are they trying to understand something how do we get that information across the kind of basic ux stuff and therefore it doesn't really need to change the designs it's really just rapid prototyping and then uh, changing componentry around the page or even having multiple pages or different steps in how the user journey is, is taken. Does that answer? Yeah, cool. Anyone else? Anybody else has a question? All right, thanks a lot. I'll stop recording now. Thank you.